The church didn't hurt you, people hurt you. <laughs> you may have heard this and it's not actually true because the church is comprised of people who make up the body of believers. Hi, my name is Gabrielle and I'm so happy that you are watching my channel today. If you are new here, I like to talk about all things fashion and faith and thrifting and today we are going to be talking about church hurt. If you are a Christian or even if you aren't, you most likely have heard this phrase and I would almost guarantee that someone within your close circle, at least one person, has experienced this. So what is church hurt? If you have never heard of that or if you have not personally experienced that, bless you, you are a lucky soul. But what it is, is emotional or physical pain that is felt by someone who was once a part of a congregation of believers whose pain was inflicted by the actions of someone in leadership. This person who was attending the church was hurt by someone in a leadership position, whether they were just attending the church or they were on staff or they were volunteering or whatever it is, there was some kind of hurt or abuse of power. Something that I wanna talk about is if you have experienced church hurt, I just wanna say from the bottom of my heart that I am so sorry. You never deserve to experience that I never deserved to experience that. None of us did. And if we truly care about this generation, we will stop telling people to just get over it or telling them that their pain's not valid because their pain wasn't actually from the church. It was just, you know, people are broken and they, you know, mess up and whatever. That is true, but that is also an excuse for broken system. So what I will not be doing in this video is telling you to just get over it, to sweep it under the rug and just find a new church without dealing with that at all. I will not be telling you to do that because I do not believe that that is healthy. Church hurt can honestly feel like a breakup. You know, when you lose a close family member, whether that is an actual death in the family or a severing of ties, it feels it is soul crushing because you're losing a part of you. If you lose a friend, same thing. It feels like you're going through a breakup. It feels like a severing of ties, like of a soul connection. And I honestly feel like we need to talk about church hurt more from this lens because it's not just, oh, well, someone hurt me and I stopped going to that church and, you know, I was really wounded, but, you know, I got over it and, you know, it really wasn't a big deal and it didn't affect my view of God at all. Because I guarantee you that for a lot of us, our view of God is also tied into one, not only how people treat us, but also two, the way that our church treats us and the way that leadership views us and respects us and listens to us. And I just wanna validate the fact that it can be so hard to separate our spiritual and physical relationship with Jesus from how people treat us within the church, from how you know, flawed team members, leadership, whoever it may be, chooses to deal with a situation because at least I have in the past tended to idolize my leadership and I'm like, wow, they're so wise. They have so much knowledge. Like, you know, they've really been through a lot more life than I have because at the end of the day, they are just human. And as much as we want to idolize, you know, whether it's a celebrity pastor or our own pastor within our church, or whether it's a famous worship leader or just a worship leader at our church. Either way, we have such a tendency as humans to put someone on a pedestal and we really should not be doing that. Maybe I'll make a different video about that. It can be hard to separate that and it can skew our view of God. And we're like, well, if they treated me like that, is that how God sees me? Is that how God treats me, etc." And this is how it was for me for a little while when I was five because I remember at the time I would go around and tell people, especially when I first started working at a church, this is the best church I've ever been at. It is so healthy. I love being here. The community is amazing. They're making disciples. I am thriving. I had also at the same time grown a lot spiritually, but I had kind of somehow combined how I was growing spiritually with this church and thinking that I couldn't continue to grow spiritually without this church because God had used it so much. But the funny thing about God is it really doesn't matter what church we go to because he can still use it to mature us and grow us in our faith. And you know, I think that I had gotten to a dangerous place at that point where I was idolizing you know, some of the people in leadership who I just felt like were really wise, especially like the sermons that I was listening to. I just felt like I was being enriched so much. And when I was fired, it was really hard for me to grasp the fact that this was, this was happening and simultaneously 
these people made a bad decision and simultaneously that's not what God wanted to happen necessarily. Like he didn't want them to treat me poorly, but at the same time, he was using that to remove me from that situation and to grow me spiritually and to bring me into a different season. And it's just hard to see that in those moments. Obviously it's way easier in retrospect. Uh, let me tell you that because I struggled, but something else I wanted to touch on is this aspect of a lack of trust that can happen after you experience church hurt. I know for me, when I was fired, I don't know, we hear all the time in church culture, just confess your sins, repent and turn from your ways and God will transform you and redeem you. And that is true. But the issue is when we share things and it is not a safe space, then people don't feel comfortable to share what they're struggling with. And so at the time when I confessed the sin that I was struggling with to a close friend who was also on staff, I thought that that was a safe space, but I, it turns out that it was not. And that is one of the main issues I see with church is like people struggle with X, Y, or Z sin, for years and years and it affects their marriage it affects their kids it affects their career it affects the entire congregation of course every decision we make has a ripple effect and i feel like and especially i feel like it has gotten a little bit better in church but it's still not great because obviously what happened to me but i feel like especially in maybe like between the 60s and early 2000s the church was very, very harsh. Like you were going to hell, no grace, no nothing. It wasn't a safe space for people to share what they're struggling with. And we are all human. We all struggle with something. Whether you like it or not, we just do. Whether it's something big or small, we all do. So whether something like what happened to me happened to you or not of getting fired or just having your trust um, betrayed, it can feel really hard to want to trust leadership again because you want to trust in people's best intentions, that they're listening to God, that they're leading your church well, but it can just be difficult to believe in all of that again when you have had that shatter. And I just want to validate that for you, that that's normal, that's okay, and you're not in the minority of feeling that way, and that takes time, and so you really just need to give yourself time to heal from that and know that what you're feeling is not like a betrayal of your relationship with God or anything like that, but it's you experiencing genuine hurt and wanting help and wanting healing. Around the time that I was fired, uh, a phrase that I started hearing a lot was, oh, the church didn't hurt you, the people hurt you, and I was like, okay that kind of makes sense because you're saying like the church itself like the system or whatever but what i have to say is if the church is failing people then that means people are failing people and people are a part of the church so the church is failing people and this is something that i am very passionate about because of what happened to me but also what i've seen happen to a plethora of my other friends the church is full of broken people and the system has to change there has to be something in place for people whether they are in the congregation volunteering on your worship team on staff whatever it may be there has to be a system in place where you say okay there's not you know there may be like a spiritual consequence but there's not a actual we're shunning you or kicking you out of the church we're firing you um we're kicking you off of the volunteer team whatever it is that's not creating a safe space because people are not going to confess their sins if they feel like their livelihood or their passion or what they feel like god has called them to is being threatened they're just not and i feel like i'm living proof of that because if i knew that i I mean, I did that for a reason. I followed God's call to confess that sin. But at the same time, like in retrospect, I'm not sure if I would have done everything 100% the same because uh, what I was doing was what I was passionate about. But at the end of the day, that's what God wanted. So what can I do? And before I move into like the next segment of this, I just want to say I have encountered so many people because let me just back up. I feel like I grew up in a Christian bubble. And when I would hear someone say church hurt, I would think of this like taboo thing. They probably went through this like really bad experience with their pastor, whatever it was. And they just never went back. Like they literally, I would hear so many stories of people never going back to church for like 15, 20, 30 years because they were so hurt from one specific instance. And totally valid. 
But I remember thinking like, wow, it must be something like really bad, really detrimental. Like I'll never experience church hurt because I love God so much because I love, you know, whatever volunteering. I don't know. It was just naive of me. And as I got into college and my early 20s, I'm 25 now, I have encountered, met, and befriended so many people who have experienced church hurt, whether it was in elementary, middle, high school, young adult, like whatever it is, for whatever reason. And there's a reason why people my age and younger and older have left the church for good and have even abandoned their faith because they see so many double standards and they've been hurt so badly and because they don't believe that God really has their best interests at heart and it it breaks my heart that the system has become so corrupt that it's failing our young adults it, it's failing my brothers and sisters in Christ that are my age and it literally makes me so sad with that all being said I want to share some quick and easy things I mean <laughs> quick and easy is relative um, because it has been two and a half years since I was fired and you know time is money baby because <laughs> I have a lot of um, perspective that I did not have then and and I was I was so angry then and I was so confused and I I don't know I was just going through a really hard time and I was so confused I, I felt like God had failed me to be honest because like that was my calling and it's not funny because in retrospect I feel like God did the opposite and if anything like has used the season so much to grow me spiritually and, and I genuinely don't think like if I had just stayed there and been like all comfortable in my you know little bubble that I would have had to push deeper and deeper. I wouldn't have needed that. I, I would have been okay with surface level Christianity. So with that being said, here are some things that helped me heal over time and also to separate God's identity and my relationship with him from what happened while still validating that the church is messed up and needs help, but that is okay. Okay. Number one, find a counselor. Uh, this probably seems obvious, <laughs> but even if your counselor is not necessarily dealing with like religious trauma, they can still talk you through like scenarios that really hurt you uh, no matter their specialty and they can just kind of help you process that. And I definitely did that in a few sessions with my counselor about mm, a year ago, like in the fall, I started talking to her about this particular situation and it was so helpful. I love her and I miss her. I am broke. So I would go back if I could. Number two, pressing into God when I felt like doing the complete opposite. Now, again, this is just one of those things that probably sounds a little bit cheesy to you, but after I was fired, like I didn't want to press into God. I was mad, I was angry. Um, I started like cursing a lot more and just like doing whatever I wanted and dressing how I wanted and just like living how I wanted because I don't know, I was just fed up and mad and like I said, angry with God and um, just like very deeply wounded. God has very lovingly and slowly nudged me back in the right direction and it started about like a little over a year after this happened to me and it is honestly taking me on a crazy journey and every day is up and down for me. Some days I'm like, okay, God, I've got this. I've got patience, I've got joy. And then the next day I'm like, ah! I'm so mad, like I'm yelling, I say a cuss word, whatever, like that's life. But um, he has very lovingly and graciously like pulled me back in and helped me um, and brought me through a lot of challenging circumstances over the last year. Definitely like leaning into him even when I just like wanted to do the complete opposite, honestly, and just like check out, really, really helped me. Number three, and this I might camp out on for a hot minute. It is going to a new church and being open to God speaking to me and helping me heal through the sermons and even the worship, which hurt me a lot at first. After I was fired, I think I went back to that church two times and then I took a little break from going to church because we were getting married and I was just out of town a lot. Then we went on our honeymoon. And then when we got back from our honeymoon that very first weekend, I was like, I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. We should probably go to church together. Like it's our first weekend back being married. And so we did decide to go to one of our local churches that I've been listening to their sermons for literally like probably six years before that. So now it's been like eight years. So I remember going that day and I, I brought a little notebook, you know, I, like I dressed up cute for the first time in like two months and <sighs> sorry. 
I was just like really emotional. It was a really big step for me because I hadn't been to a new church in over a year and um, just like my plan for what I thought that fall would look like was totally different and even what I thought the beginning of marriage would look like was totally different because of I because of being fired and just walking in that day and even hearing a worship song was like very hard for me and very triggering and I didn't really feel like singing the songs because I didn't really believe the words that I was singing I, I didn't believe that God was good at that time but the very first sermon and I wish I could like find my notes like where I've written it down I'm really not sure but I probably could find it I remember it spoke to me and I feel like almost every single week and since then God has used the sermons at this church to speak to me and the worship to just slap me in the face and bring me closer to God obviously your proximity to God cannot just be on a Sunday morning. It has to be every other day, a few times a week, whatever. If it's not every day, that's okay because like I said, we're all human, but we all have crazy lives. Um, but if it can be every day, that's great. So anyway, I just share all that to say, if you are going back into a faith environment and you feel extremely triggered, you're not alone. But just keep in mind, just give the new church a chance and say, okay, you know, I trust until I see otherwise that, you know, something is wrong or something's going on. And even if it is, just allow God, just say like, God, please just speak to me through this. And please help me overcome the deep pain that I feel in my heart about this because um, he will. And he will slowly like heal that through community and through the sermons, the worship, your own personal time with him. I promise you, he will. Two more things and then we'll be done. The Fourth thing is learning more about God's character. And like I said, when I was fired, I felt really mad at God. I, I felt confused. I felt like, okay, God doesn't really know me. I don't really know him. What the heck is going on? A lot of pain. And I just wanna like share some of the attributes of God that I think are helpful when trying to turn the situation around. Okay, here are some attributes of God and the reference verses. He is a God of justice and mercy and humility, which is from Micah 6 verse 8. God is for the poor in spirit and grief stricken, the humble, the broken hearted, which really helped me a lot. The peacemakers, that's from Matthew 5. God stands against the proud and for the humble, James 4, 6. God is love, 1 John 4, 7. God's presence shows up as love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, Galatians 5. And so ultimately separating God's character from what happened to me and saying like, these people are messed up and they did make a bad decision, but it doesn't reflect God's heart for me and God still chose in his mercy and in his love to use this to teach me and to grow me and to guide me into the next phase of my life. And I'm so, so thankful for that because I wouldn't be who I am without that. And then the fifth thing is reclaiming spiritual practices. And I saw this on a website and I loved it so much because especially in regards to a couple of different specific things, it can be a little traumatizing to go and do those things again. For instance, even prayer, because at this particular church, um, you know, it's not like we had to like get together every day and do like a cult thing. Like, oh, we have to pray for 30 minutes every day together or whatever. I mean, that's not a bad thing. Um, just like some of the prayers were like very long and drawn out and you know I think that has a time and a place and it can be helpful definitely if you're praying about something specific But God just wants to hear from you. He just wants to have a conversation with you and um, Kind of relearning that in your brain and saying like, okay, this doesn't have to be like this regimented thing It can just be like hey God I'm having a really hard day like driving down the road. Thank you so much for making the sunrise this morning It was really pretty Thank you for giving me breath this morning to wake up. Thank you for giving me gas in my car. Like it can literally just be so simple. The other thing is how I view worship because I feel like I spent a wasted a good portion of my life thinking that worship was just how you worshiped on the stage. And it wasn't a lifestyle of worship. And I feel like something that God has been teaching me over the last, honestly, couple of months is that worship is what I do every day. Like making the bed up 
taking care of myself, like taking a shower, putting on makeup, feeling cute. Worship is helping my husband do something and vice versa if he's helping me with something around the house or making dinner, whatever it is that we're helping each other with. Um, or just like making a treat for a friend or like making cookies for my neighbors, which I just did for the first time ever. Or like sending Christmas cards, you know what I mean? Like just showing people that they are loved, that is an act of worship. And just like showing up for people and um, it can just like be really simple and it, it's not all about like, oh, I have to sing this song this certain way. Of course, singing and vocal worship like is important and it is a thing, but just relearning like there's so many other aspects to it. And the other thing is quiet time because at the church, my particular oversight would say to me, you know, I get up at 5 a.m., I do my Bible study, then I do this and that and the other, and then I go to work and I'm like, okay, for me, I've accepted I'm never gonna wake up at 5 a.m. That's not for me, it doesn't work for my body. And so I'm either gonna do my Bible study, you know, in the morning when I wake up at 7.30 or at night, which works for me way better. Like at 9 p.m., I'm gonna read my one year Bible and that is okay. And it doesn't have to be this hour long, drawn out thing that takes a long time. Like God just literally wants me to like, open up the Bible, get into it really fast and see what he has to say and that'll be the end of it and i pray that he reveals something to me but it's not like this regimented okay i have to do this five step process and then it's gonna be perfect like it doesn't have to be that way so i hope these tips helped you they helped me a lot to heal i just want you to know that god loves you and he has a plan for you i'm i'm really really sorry if you've experienced church hurt you didn't deserve that and that's not God's heart for you at all. He has something better waiting for you. So anyways, with that being said, I love you guys so much. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch this video and support my channel. If you like this video, please comment below, subscribe, like the video, and I will see you in my next one. Love you. Bye.